Sometimes I wish I could be more than just an accessory to these women. But unfortunately, as a gamer, I don't get respect. Well, I'm not a gamer, so maybe they'll respect me. That just makes you a beta cuck. With how close Amethyst dragging that whip, it's a wonder she isn't tripping and falling. Also, Amethyst looks really squished in this shot. What's up with her legs? In this shot, the part of the truck behind Peridot looks like this. But in this shot, it changes to this other color. It confused me specifically because I'm pretty sure that part of the truck is supposed to be open for Peridot to crawl through here. But because it looks so strange, I thought she somehow crawled under a rear windshield or something. Something looks different about you. Have you grown taller since the last time I saw you? Nope. Still short. <laughs> You're welcome. For the joke. I see the lesson that Peridot learned in Too Far went in one ear and out the other, and frankly, I think that's bad writing. She saw how upset the idea of being short made Amethyst in Too Far, and she should even see it again here. But nope, she still jokes at Amethyst's expense and even laughs practically in her face. Couldn't they have at least tried to make Peridot express at least a little concern? Look at Amethyst's face. I'm pretty sure even the most emotionally inept person in the world world could notice this. It sucks that they seem to basically undo Peridot's development just for the sake of this one joke. Lapis Fliasin! No. This is the leaf Steven gave me. He reminds me of the time Steven gave me a leaf. Hey, yeah, it reminds me of that too. If this is a Camp Pining Heart VHS tape, where the hell did they put the tape in? Also, they stabbed the sides and bottom of this TV. That's gotta be a major electrical hazard. Is this one about the thousands of years you spent trapped in a mirror? No, I just really like that show. Her voice sounds entirely too nonchalant for what her face is communicating. Sounds like somebody didn't give the voice actor any direction. One, a two, a three, and... <sighs> well, that's as far as I practiced that. Lapis's gemstone is missing in this shot. Who is time for any of that when Jasper is out there? On the one hand, I kind of like this side of Amethyst that has a sense of urgency to get stuff done and take care of something that could be endangering the planet, even if it is selfishly placed. But on the other hand, where the fuck was this sense of urgency when the cluster was looming over everyone's heads and threatened to literally tear the planet apart? I get this conflict is a little more personal to Amethyst and thus she has more of a reason to want to get to work on it, but I would think that the Earth itself would be pretty damn urgent to Amethyst, especially since she's part of a group that made a pledge to protect the Earth. And honestly, Amethyst is a goddamn hypocrite in this scenario. Because wasn't it just last episode that the group were sitting around and watching Steven play a video game? Where was the grumpiness there? Where was the proclamation of, we're wasting time, we need to go find Jasper? Bismuth may have been placed weirdly and wasn't originally intended to be right before this episode, but that doesn't excuse how fucking weird this feels. Amethyst's outburst sorta of rings hollow when she has a problem with taking a break now. Also, Lapis's hair looks way bigger than it should be in this shot. Big A. Big A. She's from the Beta Kindergarten in Facet 9. Have you seen that place? No? So have the Crystal Gems never actually gone there or ever mentioned it once at all? That's a pretty decently sized 4,000 year secret to keep, especially since then you'd have to neglect checking there to make sure there's nothing unpleasant happening. I want to check and make sure Lapis is okay. Hey Lapis, are you okay? Lapis has this small part of her dress behind her leg in this shot, but then in this shot, it disappears. You know what to do with this. We're lucky this place hasn't blown away, Beta. Am I right? <laughs> That's a math joke, right? It really speaks to the Kroonoverse's strengths that an episode that I've criticized this harshly is still making me chuckle this much. The way that this location is explored in general also shows another of the Kroonoverse's strengths in world building. I'm genuinely interested to learn more about this place and its conditions during wartime as Peridot explains it. It's really fascinating stuff. The Kroonoverse thrives in aspects such as world building and a character's development and emotional growth most of the time. It's just things like maintaining said characters while also cultivating new ones that seem to elude them sometimes. Look at this. The holes don't even line up. The holes in the prime kindergarten didn't exactly line up great either. I don't think that's quite as big a deal as you're making it out to be. None of these holes come close. What about that one? 
How did Peridot not see that? It's the biggest hole here. Also, what? How did Jasper come out this well in an environment this shitty? This seems like more than just luck. This is completely improbable. According to the wiki, kindergartens practically require rich resources in order to create even standard gems. So I find it incredibly hard to believe that creating someone like Jasper could have even been a pipe dream here. Also, also, why did she come out literally flexing? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's about who I want to be. Yeah. And I want to be the gem that beats Jasper into the dirt. Yeah. Huh? Wait, no. I'm doing it. And not just for me, for all the weird holes out there. Oh, God. Then what are they? How did Steven not see that thing? The hole's not that deep. Jasper. And now, how does Jasper not see or hear any of these three? I mean, fuck, even the corrupted gems are getting riled up just at their presence. Why is she not trying to find out what's happening? Oh, Amethyst, you'll love this one.